Hi, I'm Wally with Riff and Write with Dave and Wally. Once again, um, Dave is nowhere to be found. I think he went on vacation this week. So we're gonna go over some PVC accessories here today. If you've watched any other videos, we went over outside corners, we went over T-joints. So today I'm gonna to give you an option for an inside corner. If you look here, we have a PVC accessory we can actually utilize as an inside corner. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. Accessory is a good idea to use. The problem with this inside corner here is if you don't get it welded correctly, obviously this flashing has been cut somewhere. If you get a void, that's where the water's gonna go. So I have a kind of another option for you. It's called a pig ear. It's all kinds of terminologies for it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna utilize the flashing membrane to do the inside corner. There will be no cut there and I don't really need an accessory. Again, I'm not telling you not to use an accessory. I'm just giving you another option. So how this detail works, you visualize this could be a three or four foot high curve. It doesn't really matter. It could be 10 feet long, 20 feet long. This piece is gonna die into the corner as you can see right here. So I have another flashing here. This piece is gonna come into the corner and go around the corner and form what you call a pig ear or dog ear. There's all kinds of terminologies for it, but I will not cut a hole there. So how this is gonna look when this detail is all done, this piece comes into the wall. Now there's a way to make this look nice. Whatever you're on the flat, try to come around the corner. If you're six inches on the flat or eight inches on the flat, make this come around the corner the same distance. Everything will kind of tie in nice and neat right here on this wall. This piece that's going around the corner is gonna come up. It's gonna go around the corner. So what you wanna do Take this up the wall, and ideally, this piece here, you want to bring it at the corner as far as you can. Ideally, you want these to meet right in the corner. And the finished detail will look something like this. There's no hole there, okay? Now, the further you bring this piece into the wall, the more that pig ear will come up, but you want about a 45 degree angle. You really don't want to do something like this, because it's going to make it harder to weld, okay? It'll be hard to get your gun. You want to get, get that into the corner as far as you can get it. So I'm going to kind of reset this. Kind of get it where I want it. Wherever these meet, I want to come up with my scissors. I want to kind of dog ear this back. So I'm going to get a little tack here. So here's the critical area to start welding, this angle change. If you don't weld this angle change first, kind of watch what happens right here as I bring this piece into the wall. And if you weld that, Look at the bridging. Now you're gonna to have to cut it and do put patches on top of patches. So kind of get it where you want it. Again, this is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way, whatever you're comfortable with. Get your gun back in there as far as you can. Do this angle change first. All right, now we're welding an inside corner. An inside corner is gonna, all that heat's gonna be trapped. So we gotta be cognizant of our heat and our speed. Okay, once I get that angle change welded, typically I'm gonna go to this area right here. Okay, I'm gonna weld up this vertical as tight to that corner as I can get it. And look at the buildup. You're constantly, when you're welding PVC, is cleaning these tips off. If you don't, you can see the chard that could get in my seam and cause a void. All right, now it's just a matter of welding this little flap. Again, making sure my angle changes are nice and tight. I don't want any air pockets. A little air pocket right there, make sure I get that nice and tight. All right, now, I want to weld these two pieces together. Well, first of all, the very top of this, you want to make sure that's nice and tight. Just give it a little tack so you know it's not going to move on you. All right, now, I'm going to weld these two together. Once I weld this together, then I'm going to weld it to the wall, all right? So if I stick my gun in here and I start welding, I need something to push against, right? Well, as I'm welding that together, I may accidentally weld it to the wall before I'm ready. Take a piece of metal, don't use cardboard, a piece of metal, kind of divorce these two. Stick my gun all the way down in here and weld these two pieces together. Don't use coated TPO or PVC coated metal, that's not gonna, you won't like that. Once that's done, I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna start welding the figure actually to the wall. Again, we're looking for a bleed out, remember we weld PVC here. Too fast weld, I'm actually gonna end up welding this whole thing down. Now, do I need a T-joint here? Again, only if I probe that open. It's on the wall. That's where you finish deep, there's no hole there. Now you'll notice, this is not welded all the way down. You really don't need to, and I would highly suggest you stay out of that corner at least an inch, because there's a lot of heat right here. And I've made this mistake myself. There's no way that can leak, it's wrapped on itself. 
you try and get that tight all the way down here with the heat built up in here. When you start to weld this, you'll try and get your gun all the way down in here. You'll do one of these numbers. When you do that, now you got to patch it. So stay up about an inch, weld the rest of it up. There's no way that can leak. It's folded onto itself. You want to see other uh, videos on other accessories? Uh, check out GAF.com slash roofing it right.